We open to Chakotay organising a mutiny. The Marquis crew members are with him, and some are Starfleet too, so we're going to take over the ship, and he wants to know where Bolana stands. All perfectly normal, and the mention of Seska actor Martha Hackett as a guest star shouldn't raise any eyebrows either. To the bridge, where Janeway leaves Chakotay in charge while she goes off somewhere in a shuttle with Paris. Chakotay tries to get her to take Tuvok as well, but that suggestion is declined, so we'll have to take care of him later. Chakotay orders Kim to run a diagnostic on the teleporters, with the purely coincidental side effect that they'll be offline for a while. A pair of randoms arrive on the bridge as Janeway's shuttle goes to warp, and Chakotay springs his mutiny by pooping some yellow on Tuvok. Others on the bridge are hit, including Kim's hair according to this screenshot, but it must be shielded as he's still standing. Well, cowering. Either way, he manages to trigger an alarm. It's all pointless, says Chakotay, as such uprisings have happened all over the ship, so it's already too late. Kim jumps up to take a shot, only to get pooped on by Bellana. Chakotay receives a report of fighting on deck too, but the more interesting part is that the report is being made by Traitor Guy, which is quite an achievement given that he was vaporised by Green Death Mist a whole season ago. Oh, and Seska's both alive and back to being a fake Bajoran now, as we discover when we go to that fighting on deck too. The trio break into the mess hall and order the group hiding there to surrender. Neelix immediately switches sides, presumably thinking that if this fails, Janeway will forgive him. It's not like she just straight up murders people, right? Bellana and Seska round up the personnel locked in their quarters, including a younger Kez, and take them all to a cargo bay where Chakotay gives them a little speech. It can be summarised thusly, join us or be marooned with the senior officers. Then Paris arrives and asks what's going on, causing Balana to freeze the holodeck programme because it was, of course, all a simulation. He came to check on her because they had a date for lunch, and she missed it due to being so engrossed by the holo novel she's found about a mutiny. We're not sure who wrote it because they encrypted that data, but based on the fact that a number of the characters are now dead, it's probably a good couple of years old. We should probably mention it to Janeway, what with the whole mutiny thing and all, but nah, fuck it, let's have more of a play around first. Paris wants to go this time, and we run through the scenario again. Things go down as before, with Paris hearing himself call Janeway down to the shuttle bay and departing, before Chakotay makes his play. But Paris wants to mix things up a bit, and tries to warn Tuvok. This actually manages to make things worse, as Tuvok is still hit, and now Kim gets pooped on too. Paris is taken prisoner and dragged to the brig. We're planning escape, or perhaps more accurately, Paris says he wants to plan escape because he's been here for over an hour and he's bored. As an aside, he earlier convinced Bellana that he should get to go first by saying he has to be back on duty in less than an hour, so I'm guessing he's now on report. His boredom is fixed by Chakotay taking all the prisoners, save for Tuvok and Kim, to a cargo bay before giving that speech again, during which Paris immediately rejoins. As another aside, I confess I kind of respect his approach to playing the story, flip-flopping between loyal and mutineer. One of the things I enjoy doing in video games is trying to break the systems, and this feels like a similar sort of arsing around in holo novel format. But, again, I digress. We're in the mess hall as Bellana and Paris discuss their experiences with the programme. Neelix overhears and talks about his, too, as he checked it out after hearing of it from the dock. Kim joins, saying he heard about it from someone else, and, well, so much for secrets. Paris is off to have another go, and this time he's playing full renegade. Janeway arrives back in the shuttle and gives Chakotay a call. Some threats are exchanged, then some pooping. Voyager's shields get buggered up, but the shuttle gets buggered up more. Joke's on them, though, as Janeway and the other Paris teleported over before it kaboomed. She's freeing the prisoners, so Chakotay and Paris go down to stop them. More pooping happens, and two dicks end up pointing their tips at each other. We'll never know who is going to poop first as the programme ends. There's no more story, and Paris is thoroughly annoyed at not getting to shoot himself. I wonder if the symbolism in that was intentional. Bellana's trying to bypass that encryption and find out who wrote the novel. No joy, and a similar lack of success from Neelix making discreet inquiries, though, based on his wardrobe, discreet may have been a ship-wide announcement. It might as well have been as even Janeway's got wind of it, and the discovery that four of the six people in front of her have been playing the mutiny simulator is received with a facial expression that can be best described as a death threat. She'd like to know who wrote it and tasks the officers with finding out. This, it seems, will not be necessary, as Tuvok is the author. 
Well, sort of. It's not a novel, but rather a training program he wrote for new security staff back when the Marquis were a new addition to the crew and mutiny was a real possibility. He deleted it later, believing it was no longer necessary and may be counterproductive if discovered, but apparently forgot to empty the recycle bin. He says he'll do a better job deleting it this time, only to be cut off by Janeway. The crew need entertainment, and this is a hit. She's not going to deny them their fun. Besides, she wants to know how it ends, and if Tuvok isn't willing to write it, Paris volunteers. Meeting adjourned. Paris is making revisions in the mess hall when Tuvok arrives to provide him the initial study used to make the program, believing this will help the creative process. Paris is resistant, saying he doesn't need probabilities to make his spectacular finale, where Janeway executes all the mutineers. The logic of this offends Tuvok, a mood not improved by learning that everyone in their space dog has an idea for how to make the story better. Given the way things are going, Tuvok insists on being a part of the creative process. He's also the only one that can edit the program, so Paris doesn't have much of a choice. Tuvok opens the program in edit mode, causing the holodeck to show some graphical defects. At the same time, Kim reports loss of power to the teleporters and communications, and the holodeck is fucky too. Tuvok and Paris find themselves in the brig, which is odd as they shouldn't be anywhere yet. Enlightenment comes from Seska. See, she discovered the program back before she was unmasked as a cardigan, fled the ship, joined the Kazon, had a kid, took over Voyager, and then cocked it. She was so pissed off by it, and Tuvok being a spy, that she made some changes and left holographic Seska here to let him know the next time he came to edit the program. Those changes? Holodeck safeties are off, obviously, and the doors locked. Also, she's going to shoot them, but gives them a ten second head start to make it nice and sporting. They leg it and are spotted by Janeway in a teleporter room. Paris thinks this means we have an ally, but Tuvok points out that Seska could have changed anything in the program to be hostile. It seems that's not quite her plan, as Seska and Chakotay appear in the room themselves. Janeway fires only for the gun to miss Poop and take her out instead. Chicote compliments Seska and they kiss, which is an interesting little nod to her complicated internal feelings about him. Tuvok doesn't want to play anymore, a conclusion he changes when Paris gets shot in the arm, and the hunt resumes. To sick bay, where Tuvok thinks he may be able to treat the wound with the holographic versions of medical equipment. The doc appears and has other plans, injecting some acid into the wound before grabbing them both and throwing them out. Steering clear of anyone else looks like the smart choice after all, and off they go into the Jeffreys tubes. Back on the bridge, they're learning that this is all down to Seska, and that she's rigged the whole holodeck to kaboom if they dick about with the door. Teleporters are still offline too, so they're stuck inside for now. But we aren't totally helpless, as Janeway wonders if we can do a little editing of our own now the program has been opened by Tuvok. This proves useful as, in the tubes, Tuvok and Paris come across some green death mist. A tool appears next to Paris, which I'm choosing to see as a comment on his personality, and he uses it to poop white at the death mist. A message on a screen confirms Tuvok's suggestion that the crew was influencing the program. To that weapons locker then, or not, as they're immediately captured, all of which is watched by Janeway in glorious standard definition. Those additions Seska made are adapting, and Belana's not sure she can dig deep enough to counteract them. Still no teleporters either, so Janeway had best keep things chugging along until we think of a plan. Seska lines up Tuvok and Paris for execution, a decision Chicote takes issue with. We learn that Janeway's fiddling with his hollow brain to stop Seska. Maybe making him immune to poop first would have been the smart choice. Oh well. Janeway writes in an attacking ship of some sort, giving Tuvok and Paris a chance to grab guns. Seska's rebuttal is to start the self-destruct sequence, which is apparently linked to the holodeck and will make it kaboom, according to Balana. The guns return to Seska, who, after cancelling the self-destruct, is unable to resist using them. Which turns out to be rather a bad decision, as Tuvox dicked around with it, and her getting fried causes the program to end. A few seconds after it's all over, Kim tells us that the teleporters are working again, which is probably why he's still in Anson. It's also probably why he wasn't invited to the mess hall for dinner with everyone else, where they all discuss the next hollow novel and have a bit of a laugh as we fly away. It's always good to see a bit of Seska, and regular viewers will know I think the show could have benefited from her being a persistent nemesis, similar to the master from Doctor Who. 
Okay, the logic of her doing this and potentially breaking her cover if it's found doesn't scan for a highly trained spy, but there's also the matter of her being a complete git, so I'm willing to let that go. The usual why are these death trap holodecks allowed on Federation ships thing applies once more, but I'm willing to let that go too. A solid enough story overall with no significant drawbacks, and I've realised it's the first holodeck episode that didn't make me think, oh god's a holodeck episode. So I guess you could call that high praise of a sort. End of episode. Hello. I'm Charlene, Kenneth's lovely wife. You know him better as the Doctor, and that's lovely too. Would you like to know what else would be lovely? If you'd consider popping over to patreon.com slash USS Pedant, and passing a couple of dollars over to the man who made these lovely videos. These people here know just how lovely that feels. They're also the ones who know they're safe. Safe from the terrible and glorious vengeance of my Dark Lord, whose judgment rains down upon those deemed unlovely. But we don't need to think about the unlovelies. We don't need to mention the agony, or that their bodies will never be found. Because you're lovely people, aren't you?